YouTube. How in the heck and heckin are ya? Hello and happy Tuesday. Today is day four of being 59 and we are going to have a great day hanging out. Um, I have a an outfit on that I'm going to be showing you here shortly because for day four of my fashion journey, I have traveled back to the 1990s and I have on a complete funky fresh outfit and it's been a really cool amazing journey I have to tell you um, there's just so much going on there's so much positivity going on with this journey that it's 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 very awe-inspiring let's just put it that way I posted a video yesterday I posted it on all three channels I put it on TikTok I put it on Instagram and I put it here on YouTube. And it was just basically a little video of me being like, hey, I'm 59 and I'm going to be on a journey over um, the next 365 days of showing you my style. Because I really, really truthfully think that we put too many, um, we put too many restrictions on ourselves when it comes to fashion when it comes to um, just growing older. And so I just did this little this little video. I'm just like, hey, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show my last year in my 50s and I'm gonna go into my 60s. And it's been pretty amazing. The outpouring of just, uh, of women just being like, oh my gosh, I need to see this. I need to have this journey. I need to watch you. I need to be inspired to not fade away is been very um, inspiring myself. So on Instagram, it's been seen 7,295 times, which I think is amazing. I love, um, I love my platform over there. On YouTube, it's been seen, hold on, it's pulling up the statistics and it's taking its time, but it's pulling up its statistics. So here on YouTube, it's been seen 1,300 um, 1, times, which I absolutely love. That means there's 1,300 women out there that know that their journey does not have to um, fade away. And then on TikTok, it's been seen 316,000 times. It is absolutely going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs on TikTok. And I think that it's really cool because the, the, the majority of my followers, I mean, I, I get my analytics all the time and I have 90% of the, my platform is women. And then the majority of the women age group is I think 18 to 35. And to me, it's just really cool that I can not only inspire women my own age, but younger generations of knowing to not waste any time of being like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna grow old because it's gonna be this and it's gonna be that. And I don't know, it's just been really fun. It's just been a really amazing journey. And I'm so excited to be able to incorporate all of us into this journey and yes we are on a mission and it's going to be great and indy's behind me doing something weird and it's just been it's been really cool you know what going into my 59th year has been very um very m motivational with lots of good energy so i can only imagine where this is gonna go so yesterday, um, yesterday I posted that video. I posted my little outfit yesterday. And then I had some ladies on Instagram. And this came from ladies, not men. But I had some ladies on Instagram be like, hey, you know, do you ever wear anything besides free people? We would like to see other fashions. Why do you always wear free, free people brand? And I was like, I know I wear a lot of free people, but I wear what I find comfortable. I wear what's within my wheelhouse of, um, of, of what my comfortability is. Just women, 92% um, of my platform is women, statistically speaking. I mean, the analytics across the board, I have just about the same on every platform. So from Instagram to um, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, I have 
almost 1.2 million followers and 90% of them are women. And I do have, you know, about a 10% following of men, which I think is amazing because I never want to say that my um, message is, you know, gender based. I can only speak of my experiences as a woman. So, I mean, I, I don't know the struggles of a man at 59. I don't know the struggles of a man in society today because I'm not one. So I like to speak on what I know in hopes that it can translate over to different genders and, you know, just be inspirational on its own. It's just I'm fighting that specific stereotype of um, how we're treated. And, and here's the thing, and I was touching on this yesterday, and I'll touch on it a little bit more today, but I really am shifting the focus of that message of how we're treated more to how we allow ourselves to be treated because I really truthfully think that we need to stop trying to um, to change the message and change how we think about the message because that's the only I mean that's the place where all our power lies is how we think about it so if we stop again if we stop trying to be like well I want to stop society from thinking this way you know I mean, it's a good thought. It would be great if that happened. The real, the realization of it actually happening, happening is slower than I think is going to be around. Um, I don't. I mean, hopefully, I see a change in my lifetime. But I'm hoping more to leave that legacy of like women just thinking differently about age um, than they did when I was younger. And it's just, you know, it's again, it's, it's where this platform is evolving and it's pretty freaking amazing. Kathy says, good morning, Lonnie. Hope you're well. I'm doing really good, Kathy. I am all, I am just all sorts of um, spunky. I am spunky, fresh attitude today because I have on a funky, fresh outfit today. And I show my outfit every single day here on live, on the live. I am going to start shifting gosh i have so much more um uh, it's mrs cox said it would be creepy if men watched your videos too why would they do that you know what truthfully i do have some very loyal followers across all platforms and i try to keep it very motivational i mean i can think of some followers right off the top of my head that have been following me from the day one and they just like the message of positivity and I think if I were to just be like, hey, this is a woman's only channel, I think it would just, um, hi, Claire, I think it would be, it, it would be wrong. It, you know, it, it, to me, it would, it would give the same message of include, you know, like, like uh, inclusive, you know, I don't want to have that. I want to have it, um, I want it to have it be where again, a, a inspirational message and Linda says men should watch as they would learn what older women really are like absolutely and Linda our comments for today I'm going to show you the comments and it's I make a lot of men uncomfortable and I'll tell you why so hi Robert oh, they, you were in the background okay so here's my funky fresh outfit are you okay Brad So this is my denim on denim look, and I incorporated my um, my platform loafers with the white socks, and then I have on my little 90s belt. Was that my son? Yes, that's my oldest son, Robert. And I, I don't know, I just... I got this shirt thrifting the other day. I absolutely love it. It cost me like five bucks. And it's just a real lightweight denim shirt from Forever 21. Buttons down the front, so I'm able to give it just like a little French tuck. And this outfit is just giving me life today. Um, it's just it's so funky. And that's kind of what... Um, that's just kind of like what I'm trying to inspire is like how I pick out my outfits is just kind of like, you know, how am I going to feel? And, and if I go with the feel, it's like 
if what is in my head is actually going to trans, it is actually going to look okay to match my energy. So that is the message that I'm really trying to get out is that I'm going to share my fashion and my style in hopes that everybody can find their own fashion and their own style. Because I know for a simple fact that not everybody is going to want to wear this outfit, but I'm trying to give you the inspiration to be like, you know what, I'm just going to go grab myself a pair of socks and I'm going to wear a pair of loafers and a skirt, a pair of pants, and I'm going to have fun doing it. I think that that's where we lose our fashion journey is when we lose the fun because it, it, it should be fun and we should get like positivity out of our clothes and the things that we wear. And so that is, again, my inspiration and it's just, it's fun. Super, super fun. So where I'm going to be changing the platform a little bit here on YouTube is I'm trying really hard to get caught up with my outfits. And I want to start showing my outfit every single day here on YouTube, just like I do every other platform, because I want to be able to share that um, that journey. And one of the things I think I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to shorten down my videos and show my outfits daily instead of being like, Hey, here's my week's worth of outfits. Because what I'm going to be doing today is I'm actually posting a video that I've been working on for the last week, but it's the countdown to my birthday. So I have five, five different outfits that I'm showing that I'm going to show my birthday outfit then I have to get caught up with my daily outfit because I really want to show my, my, my journey 365 days a year. And I don't want to do it to where it's just, um, it's just like, Hey, you know what? YouTube, here's an outfit, here's an outfit, because I think that there's women out there on YouTube that can use the same sort of motivation. So I'm trying really hard to like figure out how I'm going to work that into my schedule so I can start popping out a, an outfit a day here, long form video. You know what? It's just sleep, right? Who needs to sleep? I think sleep is overrated. Maybe I'll just get up earlier. Maybe I'll start getting up at three o'clock in the morning to do it. D says, I think I have a green shirt like that, but I always felt I didn't know how to wear it or what to wear it with. You know what? These little shirts like this are so fun, D. So another way that you can wear a shirt like this is more like a little over shirt because I think that this would have looked really cute with like a pair of black denim jeans and then like a white tank top and then this over the top of it, but just unbuttoned. I think that that's cute. I There's just so many different things that you can wear with this. And yeah, we're going to do a tattoo tour, but I'm going to be talking about other things first. Um, but we are definitely going to be doing that. Um, but there's other things that you can do with it. I would like to wear this, you know, like over a dress, like a little slip dress. You could put this over the top of it, button it up a little bit and then put a harness on, and then you can kind of see the top of the dress, the bottom of the dress. There's all sorts of things that you can do with a top like this, but absolutely have some fun with it, play around with it, and you will have a lot of fun. So I am going to be changing up, again, I'm going to be changing up my, um, my platform. And you know what, and truthfully, it changes you know, I come up with these ideas daily and each day I wake up, I really like to give, um, I really like to just push where this platform is going to go. I didn't even think about this until this after, or I was going to say this afternoon, it's only 10 o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning, but it's going to be fun and it's going to be exciting. And of course I am bringing you with me and there is going to be a whole lot of free people of outfits, you know, they might not they might want me to style other things, but I'm not going to wear clothes that I'm not comfortable in. And I was like, gosh, would that be considered like style shaming? I mean, because it's, why not just be like, wow, she really likes that brand. She wears that brand a lot. You know, I'm going to get inspiration from her. I'm going to find my own brand and I'm going to wear that instead of being just, I don't know. They started like ganging up and I'm like, okay, listen here, ladies, calm down. I'm going to wear what I want to wear every single day. And if it happens to be free people 360 days a year, then that's just what I'm going to wear because that's where my comfortability is. And that's what this journey is all about. It's all about finding 
who you are and being comfortable with it. And so that's been, yeah, that's been exciting. It's been a lot of movement. I'm super excited to see how many um, new followers are going to be on TikTok. But my counter doesn't really work because I have a million followers and it doesn't, it just doesn't show like an updated amount until the next day. So I don't know. I'll let you all know tomorrow, but it, it, there's going to be a lot of them. And for that, I'm super excited. So we are going to talk about some tattoo tours today. And I did a video and I'm going to show you the video first. I'm sure you all saw it. It's here on, um, on YouTube, but I'm going to show this and then we're going to kind of follow along with it because it gives the time, it kind of gives the time frame to my tattoos. And I'm specifically talking just about my arms today. My tattoo journey started 30 years ago. Um, my very first tattoo was on my ankle. And then I got my lower back done. I got my stomach done. And I got, um, it's been, what, 28 years in the making. And um, we, we're we just not going to go that far back. And we are just going to be talking about my arms. So the video, the video, is that, what was that song? That was the very first uh, music video that MTV did. Uh, radio killed the... No, d -d 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 what killed the radio star? I don't remember. TV killed the radio star. That's what it was. Okay, I was showing my age there for a minute, but I remember that video, and I still love that song. So we are going to take a look here. We're taking a look here. We're going here. Because what it is is a lot of times, and one of the very uh, a super popular question that I get a lot is people asking me um, if my tattoos have changed, if they've changed shapes, have they blurred, are they, you know, do they look the same? Because what happens is video killed the radio star. Yes. No, so it wasn't TV killed the radio star. It's video. Thank you. You know, I knew it was something. Um, I knew it was some sort of something killed the radio star. Mrs. Cox says, I wish I could get a tattoo, but my mom hates them. And she would kill me if I got one. You know, that's just the whole thing. It says tattoos are... Um, Tat Hello, Gina. I, tattoos are just a personal journey. And sometimes we... It's up to you whether or not you want to follow your journey or if you want to follow the journey of somebody else. And, you know, my mom wasn't jumping up and down when I got mine, but it's she learned to love them and she got one herself one day. And it's just you really just need to follow your own path. But the one comment that I get all the time is that one of like, have your tattoos changed? And the comment that I got that started this video is this one right here. I'll show you. Doo, doo, doo. Let me move you over and let me come back here and grab you. And then I'm going to put you over here so I can still read what I want to read. I'm not too sure why I'm singing, but I am. And here we go. All right. So... And then we're going down there and I want to make sure that I can move. Yes. And that moves. All right. So this is a, um, look at me. I'm like frozen in time. So sometimes, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes starting the video is the hardest part of creating content. A lot of times I will, I don't know why, but I forget what I'm doing. And the very start of my video, whether it's short form or long form, I'm like, and I'm like, Lonnie, you cannot start like that. And this is the best frame I could find to start my video. So yeah, I was like, Ugh. so anyway, the comment that I responded to, it says, I love it, but I have one question. The tattoos on your arms, at what age did you do them? And did they, and did they change shape or did, and did their shape change at all within time? Because everybody is under the impression that your tattoos are going to blur, your tattoos are going to just uh, just change. And one time, get this, one time I went to the dentist and I'm sitting in the dentist chair and I no longer go to this dentist, but I'm sitting in the, the, the chair and I had both of my arms done 
And I'm sitting there waiting for him and he's talking to me and he's like, wow, yeah, no, you have a lot of tattoos. And I'm like, yeah, thanks for noticing. I was there when I got them, but yeah. And then he's all like, you know what they say? It's a, um, it's a butterfly in your 20s and a bat in your 50s. And I looked at him and I was like, seriously, did you just say those words to me? And he's like, well, what do you mean? And I go, did you just tell me my tattoos are going to look horrible when I get older in my 50s? And he's like, oh, well, it's just a, it's just a saying. I go, for one thing, I'm in my 50s, and I think you're telling me that my tattoos look bad. And he's like, oh, no, 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 I, I'm not meaning that. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure you had some sort of rudeness in that comment, and I do not appreciate it. And instantly, I could hear his butt pucker because he knew I was upset. And I'm just like, I was just like, no. I, I mean, how many other rude things have you said to women or to men either? And just have them be there like, well, he's my dentist. I guess I can't say anything. And I'm like, baloney, you can't say anything. We always have the right to, you know, defend ourselves and defend myself. I did. So anywho, so people are always under the impression that our tattoos are going to change. So I did this little video and there's no music, so I'm okay. I'm not going to get in trouble, but this is um, my video that I did. That is an excellent question. And oh, I guess I need to push the button, huh? Because you're all like, hey, Lonnie, we can't see it. And I'm like, ah, now I know. But here's the video. That is an excellent question. And you might just be surprised how long ago I actually did start my tattoo journey on my arms. I got my first tattoo on my arm back in 2007. This one was for my sister. So this one's 16 years old. Okay, so like I said, I got my first tattoo um, when I was 30, so 28 years ago. But I didn't get my first tattoo on my arm until 16 years ago, and that was after my sister passed away. So it was a real kind of monumental thing for me because all the other tattoos, um, glad you don't go to that dentist anymore. You know what, Gina, the only reason I don't go to that dentist anymore is because the um, dental hygienist, something happened and she left. Like it was all kind of a mystery, but she was the best dental hygienist that I've ever been to. And that's the only reason I went to that dentist. So once she was gone, I was like, hasta la vista. I was out of there. But yeah, no, it was like, it, it was, it was rude. But um, all the tattoos that I had gotten leading up to that one on my arm, I could easily hide. I had them on my ankle, which, you know, I just didn't wear shorts. I had them on my back and I had it on my stomach. So easily hide, I could easily hide the tattoos. But when I got this one right here, this one was more of like, wow, you know, it, people are going to see it. You know, I wear tank tops all the time. You know, it went to right, to right here. It, it stopped right there. So if I wore like a little short sleeve shirt, you could see it poking out. And I got to tell you, it was the most beautiful memorial for my sister because I went and got that done on my shoulder when on the one year anniversary of my sister passing away. So my sister passed away November 8th, 2006. I was in the tattoo chair, November 8th, 2007. And I was just like, this is amazing. Now, the part right here, the um, flower part right there, that one I have had touched up a couple of times, I think twice because this right here was getting a lot of sun. You have to remember when I started my tattoo journey, I was also drinking and I did not have the best self-care routine. So the idea of putting sunscreen on my, my arm was like, hmm, no, nah, that's for somebody who cares about themselves. That's not, um, that's not, that's not who I am. So I didn't wear sunscreen. I exposed it to the sun a lot and it got a little faded over time. So I've had this touched up a little bit. And again, like I said, it went down to right about the arm right there. And then let's move on to the next portion of my arm.
In 2010, I got the word freedom for my puppy around my wrist. So yes, freedom was my dog that I had before Liberty and same artist who did my first flower put the word freedom around my wrist. And it was so funny because I wanted the word freedom for my dog and I was like, well, what, what kind of font should I um, use? I mean, this is with this and this is that. And I was actually tanning in a tanning booth at that time, which leads you to believe how little self-care I had. But I was tanning in the tanning booth and there was a, uh, you know how they sell like the tanning booth sunscreen or not sunscreen, but like uh, Elixir, like booster. I saw one there that had the word freedom. And this is... Um, she now says maybe she left because he was a creep yeah you know what truthfully i think something like happened to her like um like either an illness or something like that it was really weird it was a really weird circumstances how she left but anyway the second time i started on my arm was my wrist for my puppers. in 2012 i got this area done right here for my dad and all right, so this part right here, this is what I had for my dad. And this is 100% a very painful spot and extremely painful. Not just a little painful, this is a ghost pepper painful. And I got that after my dad passed away. And it says, um, gosh, what does it say? It says Donald E. Weston here up on the top because that's my dad's name. And then it says God, family, and country because that's what he really cherished and the American flag, his birthday and the day he passed away. This is what is actually inscribed on my dad's headstone because he's buried in a military, um, in a military cemetery. So this is what is on my dad's headstone. So I had this tattooed right here. And I remember laying there and I'm just like with my arm up over my head because that's how they have to tattoo this area. So I'm laying there and my head, my hands up over like this, and my my little hand is cupped right there, and um, and it was literally full of sweat, and I was like, I, I mean, I had like a little cup full of sweat on my hand, and it just was it, worth every ounce of it. But I still remember like laying there, and I was like, you know what, Dad, you were a um, you were a pain in real life and you are equally a pain on my tattoo journey. So yeah, no, it was, it was definitely a very owie one there. So moving on, we're moving on up. 2016, I got the rest of my arm filled in for my mom. Then in Okay. So I had my journey so far was shoulder underneath here. So I had probably like a quarter sleeve by that point. And then I had my wrist done. So I had all of this open real estate right here. So when my mom passed away, you know what? I love my mom and she was always the center of attention. So I gave her the majority of my arm and I just wanted the two to connect. So Brian went ahead and he took the flowers throughout and he put the flowers all the way down and then I have the words to you are my sunshine. Um, Brandon has the first 18 words. I have the last 18 words written around my arm because that's what my mom used to sing to me and my sister and the grandkids. So I have, you'll never know dear how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away, which is written around my arm, which, you know what, just having this, having this explanation as to my arm so far is the reason why I fight so loudly for people's right to be tattooed. And it's why I, I speak up and I, I tell people that it's your self-expression because my arm is my coping mechanism to life. My arm reminds me on a daily basis as to um, why, where I get my inspiration from, where I get my strength. You know, my family is never far away from me. They might not physically be standing in front of me, but I carry my family with me every single day 
on my arm. And to me, that is the most beautiful thing that I could have done to them in the simple fact that they couldn't be here to live life themselves. So when I say that I think that everybody has the right to be tattooed without judgment or shame or, or, you know, people looking at them differently, or maybe you don't get this job because you have chosen that path to live your life, then I'm going to stand there and I'm going to call out, I'm going to say baloney. I'm not going to say that word. I'm going to say something that would get me in trouble with YouTube, but I'm going to stand up and I'm going to speak for what I believe. And that's what I believe. And it really irritates me every time, like, again, that, you know, if somebody's like, oh, well, you must be the wild one. No, I'm not. I'm just the independent woman who knows what I want to look like, and that's what I'm going to look like. So there you go. You know what? You can take your wild woman little like, oh, she must be this and she must be that. You can put it in your pipe and do whatever you want to with it because it's not the case. Lauren says, I've got two sleeve tattoos, and sometimes people ask me what the meaning like I <laughs> ask me what the meaning I'm like I like them so I got them yeah and here's the thing Lauren is like I think that the older I get the less approachable I become I don't know maybe it's just me but if somebody really truthfully is interested in tattooing and they really ask a question in a manner of like I think your tattoos are beautiful. I mean, do, do they have any meaning? I will 100%, 99% of the time, I'll stop and I'll be like, absolutely, they do. This is for my dad. This is for my sister. This is for my mom. I will 100% do that, except, and there is a huge exception to this rule. And that exception is when I get this. If I'm standing, and this happens more often than you, you might imagine, but it, like, it, let's just say, for example, I'm standing at the UPS store because I have a package to pick up and I'm standing there and there's, there'll be a lady in front of me or a man or a couple and they turn around and they do this. Let me, let me just demonstrate. What did those mean? And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh, heck no. Uh-uh. I am not going to give you the time of day. If you are going to look down at me, if you're going to look at me like I'm an oddity, if you're going to look at me like, ugh, look at what she did to her body, then I'm going you're going to get the you're going to get the answer that you're going to get. And that is none of your damn business. You know what? I do not have to tell you my life story. My life story is my gift. My life story is exactly that. My life story. And I share it with who I want to. I do not have to share my story. And that's the beauty of having just that confidence of like, I don't have to, I, I didn't do this for you. I did it for me. And that's why I love my tattoos so much. Side eye. Oh yeah. I cannot stand. The only person that can give me side eye and get away with it is Indy. Other than that, uh-uh. <laughs> a kick to their face. Absolutely. Now here's the thing. And I know that a bunch of you do have tattoos, but I get this comment all the time that people touch people's tattoos like they'll come up and they'll like start like touching their tattoos and I'm like why you know why would anybody do that and why would you allow somebody to do that because I am extremely protective of my personal space all right my space is my space and I'm very kind. I mean, I smile at everybody. I ask every single cashier that has ever helped me, how's your day today? How are you doing? I'm a very nice person, but I'm a very nice person who has incredibly um, strict boundaries as to who's allowed in my personal space. Lauren, I have never had anybody touch me, but the amount of comments that I get it's of this happening is crazy. In fact, well, Linda says, yeah, a guy in a bar asked me if he could touch my tattoo. Ooh, Linda, I am really hoping that you said, 
new. Kathy's called them space invaders. Yes. Yes. And that's just the whole thing. It's like I did not tattoo this journey on my skin. And nowhere on it does it say, welcome to my space. Nowhere on it does it say, hey, touch away. You know, I don't care who you are, a creepy person. Go ahead and touch me. It doesn't say that. And it just amazes me. It, people get really offended sometimes, though. In the comments that I read and the, the things that I have, um, the things that I have seen, people are like, yeah, they, you know, when I tell people, no, they get really offended. Like, it's like public space or something. And I'm like, no, it's not public space. I'm not a billboard. And so, yeah, I've never had anybody touch me, but I do get like weird looks all the time. In fact, I, when I got my nails done, um, it was really full of a lot of women my own age or older. I mean, like every pedicure chair was taken. And I have so much fun with my manicurist. He's this really cool guy. We have a very similar journey as far as like um, uh, sobriety. And we just sit there and we talk and we laugh. And I had on a really cute outfit that had a little bit of a vavoom going, but I had my bralette on. You know, I had my tattoos um showing and I was in a good mood and I stood up to walk out and I swear you could have heard a pin drop I mean I think every single woman in that place stopped and was like and I was just like whatever you know what you can wallow in your own misery all you want but I am not gonna let you make me feel like I am an oddity because Maybe I am and maybe I'm not. But if I want to feel odd, I will. If not, then I'm just going to rock my badass tattoos. So let's go ahead and, and continue with our journey. Because boy, I got all fired up on that one. All right, here we go. Let's see what's next. 2022, I went in and I finished it up completely and I did my hand. Now, my hand is for Liberty. I had I always said that I was saving this spot for her. So my full arm is my in the order in which I got it. My sister, Freedom, my dad, my mom, and Liberty. And it is my just absolute, it, it's, it's just means so much to me. Now, a lot of people ask me, and I, another question that I get a lot is, why do you have one color arm and then one black and gray arm? And the reason that I did this is it was very specific and it was very, um, it was very thought out. And I had the majority of my colored arm done and I started in on my left arm. And I'm like, if I do another arm in color, it's going to take away from the splendor of this arm of my right arm. And I wanted this one to stand out. I wanted my family members to be the shining light. I didn't want this arm competing with this arm. So I purposely got this one all black and gray. And it's been a really interesting journey because I do get a lot of people like asking me, they're like, did you do that on purpose? I'm like, of course I did it on purpose. It's on my body. You know, I have control over what's tattooed on my body. And some people get it and some people don't. But regardless as to whether or not some people get it or not, then that's it, it's neither here nor there on me. But that's why I have one colored arm and one black and gray arm. It's just to make this one stand out just a little bit more. So let's continue with the other arm i think the black and gray tattoos are more popular mm, i think they're about 50 truthfully i think they're about 50 50. my black and gray arm i started this one in 2007 and i ended this one in 2022 also so i have 16 years of tattooing my arms and i'm going to tell you right now i think that they have held up for the test of time. This one has incredible line work and it has not moved an inch. Take good care of your tattoos, wear lots of sunscreen, and just stop worrying about what your tattoos are gonna look like when you're 59. So that's pretty much the, um, the story of my black and gray arm. And the story is, is that it just doesn't have much of a story. I wanted a, um, I wanted my second arm, I wanted my left arm done, 
but I, I, I just didn't want it to be packed full of like super meaning. I wanted that arm to have a little bit more freedom of just being fun. And where are you? Oh, there you are. And I wanted it just to be kind of like, like I said, just a little bit more fun and a little bit more and a little bit more um, just kind of like, I don't know, my, my whole life was always like kind of like tragedy. And I just wanted my black and gray arm to be a, just a little bit more, like I said, whimsical. And I think it's kind of interesting how my colored and bright and bold right arm is for my sad part. And then my black and gray arm is more of my like happy go lucky side. But that's one of the things I love about tattooing and I love about life is that sometimes you just don't have to play by rules and you can have it represent whatever you want. Linda says, I'm not a matchy matchy girl. So I love that. Uh, no, no matchy matchy for me. Yesterday, I was almost too matchy matchy with like my, um, with that top and then the um, burgundy boots, but I threw those socks on so it wouldn't be too matched. Uh, let's see. Claire says, tell them that the color has faded out. Yeah. I'll just be like, wow, you know what I should have gotten? Um, I should have gotten a better tattoo. So the color would have stayed. So now it's just like that. Mrs. Cox says, if I get a tattoo, they won't have a meaning. I just like how they look. Yeah. And that is, you know what, and truthfully, it, it, there's no right or wrong. I don't think there's a right or wrong way to get a tattoo. I think there's a right and wrong way where to get your first tattoo. But I just don't think the meaning behind it is there's a right or wrong way for that. Teresa says, oh, sorry for being late. I had a doctor's appointment. Well, Teresa, I'm glad you can make it and hopefully you're okay. Um, I actually have to make a doctor's appointment when I am done here. <sighs> All right everyone i'm gonna do it but i got a referral referral for a col colonoscopy so i am on a journey of self-care self-love and i know i need one and i have put it off for 10 years but I'm going to do one. I'm going to be a big girl about it. I'm going to tell you about it. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. I'm not going to like film it or anything, but I'll, you know what? I'm going to be honest about it and I'm not scared about it. I mean, it's not, they just like probe around. I'll just pretend like I'm being a, abducted by aliens or something, but I'm going to have it done. And that's just the whole part of my self love self care journey. And you know, I don't hide anything from you, even my colonoscopy there. I said it. I said it. So um, that is, again, just my journey. It's just, it's called, basically, it's called like a patchwork um, kind of tattoo. It's where there's really no rhyme or reason. There's no, there's no set theme. Um, the hardest part is drinking that stuff. I've heard about that stuff, but you know, yeah, no, I, I, uh, you know what I'll do is I'll drink that stuff on a live and then that way you can give me the encouragement to finish it. But it's my tattoo journey is just a mixture of healing. It's a mixture of hope. It's a mixture of just whimsy. It's a mixture of it has meaning. It doesn't have meaning. And that's what makes it so special to me is that just like me, it doesn't have to be anything other than what it is. And so the one tattoo that I did show on that video is this one right here. It's the sun and the moon and just real fine line, um, real fine line work. I've had this one since my mom passed away, which was in 2016. So I probably got this one like the beginning part of 2017. There is no bleeding. There's nothing. So I love it again. Sun scare sunscreen. <laughs> Claire says, I've been putting it off since January. Well, I've been putting it off since January 2013. So I've been putting it off a long time. Linda says, you will be fine. My partner had one. Yeah. You know what? Again, it's, I don't think that the actual procedure is going to do it. It's more of just like the, the thought of it. And then also too, I've always like, I don't know, Sometimes my thinking is, is if I don't go to the doctors, nothing will be wrong, but that's just not the right way of thinking. And I really want to do, um, I, I really want to, like I said, have a self-care journey because yesterday 
after yesterday afternoon, I actually went to the dentist and I've spoken of this before. And at the dentist, um, they do that little measuring, you know, where they like, cause I have problems with my gums because I spent all of those years being an alcoholic, not going to the dentist, but you know how they did the little like three, two, three, 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 two, three, three. And what they do is they check and they see how far of a gum recession you have. Well, the first time I went back to the dentist after I got sober, I had some nines and some eights. And that means bad. That means like, holy guacamole girl, did you even know what a toothbrush was kind of bad. And so yesterday it was like three, two, three, four, three, 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 two, four. And I was so proud of myself that I have gotten it back to where it is. But they did find a little bit of like a, a little bit of bacteria because I, I kind of just, I don't know. In, in all honesty, I just kind of like, I didn't floss as well. I'm just going to say it. And it showed, but I got my little laser treatment. I'm all back in, in action. I got some stuff off of Amazon for like um, keeping my gums. Did everything go okay? Keeping everything looking good. So I'm going to share that too with with you. Oh, and by the way, I have been doing my Amazon videos like, but I have been taking like finds that other people find and I'm going to switch it up a little bit. And I actually ordered a bunch of stuff on Amazon. So I'm going to be showing you the things that I actually buy on Amazon. So I thought that that would be a little bit more interesting than just like, Hey, here's just some random stuff that somebody else found. So I came up with that idea today at the gym. All right. So let's take a look at some comments because as always, we have some spicy comments and then we have some not so spicy comments. So we are going to take a look at the first comment, which is from Roger and good old Roger says, not sure about the hair, but it looks like you have permanently destroyed the rest of you. And for me, my response was an verbatim, my response was the simple fact that you said this makes me happy. And it's the truth. The simple fact that Roger doesn't like what I have done to my body means that I'm making him uncomfortable. It means that I am outside of his comfort zone and I could not be happier about that because uh, that's what I'm here for. I, you know, I know Julie, but it, it, it's, here's the thing. It's, and the reason that I show you these things is because I want to let you know that words don't stop me. Words shouldn't stop you. Somebody's opinion like Roger does not stop us. It's up to us whether or not we let these kind of comments make us hide. You know, sometimes if we blend in, we don't stand out and Roger wouldn't even know that I existed. And the simple fact that I have chosen to live a life out loud, it shines the light on me and it makes people like Roger uncomfortable because a strong, independent, older female makes men like that uncomfortable. And I am all about it. I am just like, yes job well done. Because you know what, Roger, that's something my ex-husband would say. And the simple fact that I got under your skin gives me more pleasure than you will ever know. <laughs> yeah, Roger is another bundle of joy. I know there, there's a bunch of bundles of joys out there. And it says, and he's a man, men should be kind to women. You know what? People should be kind to people. I don't think one gender should be nicer to another. I just think that people need to be nicer. Claire says he must be a friend of Doug's from yesterday. Yeah, you know what? I'm pretty sure that Roger and Doug are um, in a carpool together. But don't worry about it because there's somebody else sitting in the back seat. And the person sitting in the back seat is good old Vince. Um, Linda says, yep, I think they're buddies. Yep, because this guy, now this guy responded to this. And truthfully, I think looking at these comments are so fun and hopefully you enjoy them also. But now this comment was on my video 
talking about how I wanted to inspire women of all ages to dress however they want. This was my little video that I did yesterday that was like, hey, this is my 59th year. I'm going to be on a style journey. I invite you to come with me. It was not meant for anybody to think anything of it. What lenses are in his glasses? I think you are gorgeous. You know, it's he didn't like the tattoos. He didn't like the simple fact that my tattoos um, made him uncomfortable, which again, means that I'm doing a really good job. Now, Vince's comment was this. It says, those really withstood the test of time and gravity. Nice. Went straight to your head though. Okay, so let me decipher what good old I, Irvin, 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 I think his name is Irvin. Do you think Irvin, Irvin Ice, whatever. Okay, he was talking about my cleavage because the top that I had on had a little bit of cleavage. So he instantly was like gonna comment on my chest. And then he says it went straight to my chest, to my head. So he's saying that I have a nice rack, but I'm a little conceited. That's truthfully what he is saying. And my response to him was, um, they should withhold this. What did I say? I said, they should withhold the test of time because I paid enough money for them. You know, my, my, I had an augmentation and these are by design and I am not ashamed of it. And here's the thing. It's like, if you think that my confidence means that I'm arrogant or conceited, then so have it, Irvin, if that's your name, Irvin Ice. I don't care because for every single Irvin, Roger, or Doug, there are a hundred people standing behind you who are getting the right message. And they are the ones that I get up every morning and talk to. They are the ones that inspire me. The simple fact that you think I have a nice chest, great. Like I said, I paid enough for them. They should be nice. You know what? Otherwise, I would want my money back. And so I'm not going to shy away from that. And so I just think it's really funny how these, these people come on here and they really think that what they say is going to have any impact on my day other than the fact that I'm like, awesome. Now I have a comment that I can show my life to and we can talk about you, Roger and Irvin, because that's all you're doing. You're just giving me content. So I say, thank you. Teresa says, um, went to a dermatologist. I have a lot of sun sores trying to form into skin cancer. I have freeze burns all over my body. Okay, Teresa, I hopefully you're okay. Make sure that you, um, make sure that you heal those freezer burns. And one of the referrals that I got sitting right here that I am going to go to the doctors is to a dermatologist because I'm going to be just like you. I'm going to go in, I'm going to get everything checked up and whatever I have to have burnt off or cut off, it's going. Linda says, oh, that's funny. It is funny. And that's just the thing is it is funny. I mean, without people like Irvin, it's like, who could I make fun of? And so I'm just like, this is awesome. Linda says those poor, those guys probably sitting there on the computer all alone. Yeah, because you know what? We could talk about certain anatomy for them, but I choose not to walk down that path. But I always have that in my arsenal. So if you want to come at me, you know what? I can come right back at you because there are certain there are certain attributes that you have that, you know, are up for grabs, but I choose not to play that game. So if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. And that's just the thing is people, I, I, again, I think it's kind of funny, but people look at me like, she is the nicest person I've ever met. And I am such an incredibly nice person who once you pass that line, that's not a nice person on the other end of that, on the other side of that line. And I protect me and my own and you like the lioness I am. Um, Linda says, you're turning a negative into a positive. Absolutely. And that's why I look at these things because I'm going to show you another comment because truthfully, this is why I do what I do because I have people like Jaden, Strawham 7605 saying, well, 
I know what I'll be watching for the next 365 days because she wants to see the journey. She wants to be inspired. She wants to see somebody be like, hey, I'm okay being me and I'm going to show you that so you can be you. That's why I do what I do. Not for Roger, not for Doug, and certainly not for Irvin. Nope, -de nope, nope, nope. And then my friend says, I'm nice with an edge. And so are you, Lonnie. Yeah, yeah, it's an edge you don't want to, it's an edge you don't want to touch. And then, you know, I have another one. This is um, Ur Urbwin8707 says, happy birthday, love, looking forward to it with a little smiley face. So ev <laughs> like I keep saying, for every comment, for every rude comment there is, there are hundreds of positive comments and that's what keeps us going and I never want to just focus on the negative and so I always like to turn that into something funny or show you something inspirational and this is inspirational and I again you know going into my platform I knew I was opening up myself to negativity and it, it just it's all a part of the it's all part of the journey and it's how I choose to deal with it is the only control I have because I, I'm not going to change their minds. Roger is never going to think a, a different way, you know, by my comment back to him, but how I respond to it again is my, is my choice. And by showing you these comments and by making fun of them, it is absolutely, um, healing for me it makes me feel like I have a voice and it makes me feel like I have um some power in this and so yeah it, it's fun it's 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 fun that's all I'm gonna say about that one they're just silly people and they are they're just silly let's just put it that way silly so I um yesterday when I was talking to you all I told you that I was having a hard time um with my Amazon live that I really couldn't get like my footing. I, I really just, I couldn't, I wasn't in my groove. And when I'm in my groove, I am not in my groove. I mean, there is just nothing smooth about me when I'm not comfortable. And so I did my live a little bit different yesterday and I actually really liked how I did it. And what I did is I am, like the videos that I put on here, the outfits I show you, I'm actually starting to show it on my Amazon Live, and then I am finding things on Amazon that look like it. So for example, yesterday I wore that really cute maxi dress with my Doc Martens and my Adidas socks. So I'm gonna show them that video, and then I found some stuff on Amazon that's very similar to it. So I was pretty happy. It's been bugging me. It's been kind of like in the back of my mind, like, oh, I have to figure this out. And I was just, I was really glad that I feel like I finally have a little bit of a grasp on this one. Claire says, you really have given me a boost after a few tough years. I had lost myself. I have now got a hair appointment booked, three tattoos booked, and I bought some makeup uh, about five years without. Claire, I love it. I think that that goosebumps. I think that that is exactly right there in that comment. Why I do what I do, because I want you Claire. I mean, I want you just to look in the mirror every morning and be like, I like what I see. You know what? I do that every morning. I I'm like, I like what I see. I might not be perfect, but I like what I see because I'm representing myself in truth. I'm not trying to be 20. I'm not trying to be tall. I'm not trying to be this or I'm not trying to be that. I'm just trying to be the best funky version of Lonnie that I can be. And if that means wearing a thrift store top with some jeans and some loafers and going back to the funky fresh 1990s, then that's what I'm going to do. And it is just, it's just so important. And Linda says, go for it, Claire. Absolutely. I absolutely say that. Mrs. Cox says, I wish my mom was more supportive to me like you. You know what? And here's the thing. And here's the, the hard reality of this. And sometimes I have to say things that aren't always the softest things. But at one point, 
we need to just be like, I'm not getting this outside support, so I need to support myself. I loved my mom, but my mom had a lot going on. You know what? She had a lot on her plate. Her little cup was full. She gave me as much support as she could, but the rest of it was up to me. And I know myself that through therapy, we as children, we are put into a position to where we are raised a certain way. But as adults, we have the choice as to whether or not we are going to do something about it. And Mrs. Cox, as harsh as this might sound, you have the choice to either be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to start living my life the way I want to live my life. Or you're going to be like, I'm going to live my life the way others want to live my, they want me to live my life, not get a tattoo, say certain things, wear certain things. And at one point, you're going to have to figure out what it is that makes you happy. If that makes you happy, go for it. You know, I'm not telling you what's right or what's wrong. I'm just saying at the end of the day, you need to sit down and figure out what makes Mrs. Cox tick. And that's what you need to do without cares or concerns as to somebody else. Because your mom, you can still love her and be independent. You can still love her and live the life that you want to in your own way. So it's just a matter of finding that within yourself and figuring out what's the most important. And I say that again out of love because I had to, I had to walk that walk myself. And at one point I have to be like, mom, I love you dearly, but I have to do things my own way. And my mom was okay with that. You know, she supported me 100%, but I stopped asking permission to be myself. So that's just my only advice. And like I said, sometimes I never want to say anything rude about anybody. And I'm sure you're, you love your mother very much, but you need to, you need to find your own path. And it's really sometimes as a mom, we have a tendency to overmother thinking that we're doing the best job and it's actually causing more harm than good. So I say that from experience because I was a complete smother mother to my children after I stopped quit drinking. And it wasn't until I started pulling back that we actually started having a good relationship. So, so that's my tattoo tour for the day. That is my comments for the day. That is my funky fresh outfit for the day. I'm going to um, go over to Amazon Live and then I'm going to work on the video that I'm putting out this afternoon here on YouTube. And what I'm doing is, is I'm putting out the five days leading up to my birthday. And so I'll have five different outfits that I'm showing you. That video will be out later today. And then I'm going to work on my birthday outfit. And then, like I said, I'm going to start working on this transition to where I can get my outfits out more often in kind of in the anticipation of you being um, on my journey with me here on YouTube because I mean, TikTok and Instagram, super easy. They're short, they're short form videos. It's a minute and a half and I'm done. YouTube's a little bit more complicated because it's a long form video. So it takes longer to produce, but you are worth every single moment. So there you go. And Claire says, life is too short. You need to make it your own. Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes we get confused that being independent means like, we're being rude or we're being, you know, disrespectful. And it's really not. It's just you being you. Uh, Linda says, listen to Lonnie, Mrs. Cox. Yeah, listen to Lonnie. And you know, and I just say it out of love and I just say it out of experience. And I don't tell you all anything differently than I would tell my own children. So that is a piece of advice that we all just need to carve out our own happiness in our own day. So tomorrow is Wednesday and we usually talk about skincare on Wednesday. So in honor of Teresa going to the dermatologist and me too going to the dermatologist, we're going to take a little look into sun skin care, skin care, sun, skin damage prevention. And we're also going to take a look at some warning signs as to what we need to look for on our own skin that if something might be going kind of south. So we're going to kind of have like a little self-care, skin care kind of day tomorrow. I already know what outfit I'm wearing, so it's going to be super cute for our skin care, sun care, skin care Wednesday. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I just need more coffee because my little brain's like... <laughs> 
So anyway, I love you all dearly. Please, please, please remember, be bright, be bold, be brave, and wear what you want. Just absolutely be the best version of you that you can be. I'll be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time with a new outfit on, a new conversation, some new laughs, some new thises, and some new thatses. So until tomorrow, remember, I love you all, and I will see you.